So, why are we doing this? Why are we learning how to factorise quadratic equations? What use does this actually have? So a lot of the complaints of maths is that there's no use for it, but this does have a application with our graphs that we were looking at earlier. So here's a brief graph. Okay, obviously that's our x squared graph. Now, we need to find these points here, the points where it crosses the x-axis. And the only way to do that is using factorising or another method we'll find later. But that is how we're going to solve this. So we're looking at an equation, something like x squared plus x minus 56. Okay, so this point here is actually minus 56. So we're looking at that and we want to find the solution for these points. Remember, this is our y, this is our x. That's a y again. This is our x. So these points are where y equals zero. So remember, this whole thing is y equals that. But y is zero. So let's get rid of that. And let's put a zero in. Okay. This is how we're going to solve it. We're going to factorise. So let's have a go at doing that. You should be pretty good at that by now. So let's put our brackets in. We've got a minus here, so it's going to be a plus and a minus. We don't know which one yet. So we need two numbers of times together to make 56. Now, it could be 1 and 56. I'm going to guess, no more times tables as I do, that it's going to be a 7 and an 8. Happily, they have a difference of 1, which is what we need. So, we need the difference to be plus 1. So which one's going to be the plus and which is going to be the minus? Well, obviously, we need the 8 to be the plus because then we need to take away the 7. So we factorised it. So we need this whole thing to equal 0. And we need two solutions. It's nice and easy. Look at this. Anything, remember, anything times by 0 must equal 0. doesn't matter if I have 70,000 zeros. They're still 0. So all I need to do is make either one of these brackets 0. I'm going to solve the equation. How do I make this bracket zero? What plus eight equals zero? Minus eight. So x could equal minus eight. What minus seven equals zero? Seven. So x could also equal seven. There are our solutions. Let's do that once more. Should be fairly easy for you. It's a bit nicer. Eh? Okay. So this time we're going to do x squared minus 11x plus 35. So that's not going to be this. It's going to be a slightly different graph, but it's going to look roughly the same. Again, we're finding the points where it crosses the x-axis, so we want this to equal zero, that's the only way we can solve these equations, set them to equal zero. Okay, so, let's have a go. We've got our brackets. I hope you spotted straight away, we've got a plus here and a minus here, so we've got two minuses in here. So we need two numbers of time to get to make 35, and then add up to make 11, or have a difference of 11. They're actually gonna to add to make 11, aren't they? So. 35, it's 5 times 6, isn't it? So it doesn't matter which way around we put them. It's going to be 5 and 6. Now, obviously, normally I'd get you to multiply this back out and prove that, but I'm pretty confident, so we can just leave it at that. And we've got to make this whole thing equal 0. How are we going to do that? We're going to make each bracket in turn 0. So x can either be 5 minus 5, yeah, 5, or x could be. Six. And that's how we do it. That's how we solve a quadratic equation. One tiny little step on top of what you were doing before. But unfortunately, I'm going to make you do a whole load more of those questions. So have a go at them, and then we'll come back and we'll see what happens when we can't factorise.